Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. How are you tonight? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Hi, teacher. As usual, we are going to check about the platform first. This is the class of tonight. And then you will see there the question for tonight. Also, please remember we need to move on and do the exercise 18. Okay, so you just need to click on the correct option and then submit that one. And also remember to move on with the platform since this is the last week. So we need to check into that. Okay, we're going to check about the attendance. Para mañana tendría que estar terminada toda la plataforma. Uh, si es posible antes de la clase, please. Let's see. Abel Edenilson, Salazar Melara. Abigail Elizabeth Flores Hernández. Carlos Humberto Estrada Escobar. Francisco Ernesto Acuña Rivera. Gabriel Esaú Melara Rosales. Isela Beatriz Hernández Morales. Joana Saraí Maldonado González. Carla Ivania Anaya Ancheta. Carla Lorena Mendoza Guevara. I'm here. Good. Kevin Ramiro Vázquez Pineda. Laura Guadalupe Fuentes de Meléndez. Marilyn Alejandra Grande Pérez. Present. Good. Mario Ernesto López Ramírez. Mirna Janet Ángel de Castro. Present teacher. Good. Roberto Emilio González Cruz. Santos Cristina Cerritos de Ruiz. Presentación. Good. Saúl Adalberto Cornejo Valdés. Present. Good. Jocelyn Stephanie Roldán Castaneda. Ok. Let me just check some people that just came. And... Very good. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to continue with the classes tonight. So we're going to check about this. Okay, uh, Carolina, don't worry. I'm going to take it to yours here. Teacher. Yes. I want to show you something. Can I? Uh, yes, of course. Yeah, my flower blossom today. Ah, okay, that's good. Yeah, so, hold on. Okay. Let me show you. Look at this. Oh, I have seen that one before. It's a very nice thing, right? It's very big. And do you know how it smells? It smells very bad, right? Yeah, <laughs> like it's there. Yeah, that is true. I, I, I remember a friend of mine, she had something like that. And yes, I remember it's beautiful, but it smells kind of bad. But... It's not that bad, I mean. Quería mostrárselas el viernes, pero ni modo, tendré que pensar otra cosa. Okay. Pero quería mostrárselas. Perfect. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Good, good. Uh, so, we're going to start the class and vamos a iniciar con un video de idioms, siempre para reforzar esa parte. Y luego vamos ya con el tema de ahora. So, Let's see how it goes. Vamos a poner atención y luego me dicen qué entienden. Entendieron del video. So here we go. This is British English. Hello everyone and welcome back to English with Lucy. Today I have an idioms video for you. 
I'm sure that you will agree with me that English is sometimes quite ridiculous. So today I have compiled 15 of the funniest idioms, along with examples, of course. These are idioms that you can use in real life situations, but they are also idioms that have funny meanings, are just a bit strange, or tickle me in some way. If something tickles you, it makes you laugh. You can download the free PDF worksheet for this class. It's got all of the idioms plus extra examples. I always like my students to have nice worksheets to keep with them. Just click on the link in the description box, sign up to my mailing list, and it will come directly to your inbox. Right, let's get started with the first idiom. The first idiom is a lovely one, as are all of them really. It is a storm in a teacup a storm in a teacup. And interestingly, in American English, they say it in a slightly different way. They say a tempest in a teapot. So it's still tea related. Now this means a lot of unnecessary anger and worry or drama about a matter that is not important. Unnecessary drama. For example, She's made an official complaint to the CEO about the type of cheese in the cheese sandwiches at the canteen. This seems to me to be a storm in a teacup. A lot of unnecessary worry and anger about something that just isn't that important. Number two, this is one that I have mentioned before many years ago, but it's so important and so widely used that I feel comfortable saying it again. It is Bob's your uncle. Bob's your uncle. Very important. This is a phrase that we say when we have reached the end of a set of instructions or when we've reached a result. It translates as, and there it is, or there you have it. So an example would be, to make a cup of mint tea, boil a kettle, add a tea bag, wait two minutes, and Bob's your uncle. There you have it. Now, number three is slightly morbid. It is as dead as a doornail, and this means very, very dead. You couldn't be more dead than a doornail, I guess. Uh, an example would be, I tried to save the mouse that my cat brought in, but it was as dead as a doornail. Similarly, along the same lines, we also have number four, which is to kick the bucket. To kick the bucket. Now, this is a verb, and it means to die. To die to kick the bucket, to die. I don't know why I'm saying die in such a die. I just can't help it, die. Um, let's move on. Now, the origins of this phrase are quite interesting. It's because when people died by hanging, uh, they would stand on a bucket and then kick the bucket away. And, and that's where to kick the bucket comes from. An example? Unfortunately, our favourite neighbour kicked the bucket three years ago, but we still feel her presence in the neighbourhood. And that's true. My absolute favourite neighbour died at the ripe age of 93, I think. But every time I go home to visit my parents, I always expect to see her. And then I realise she's not there. We miss her a lot, but she had a fantastic life. Number five is everything but the kitchen sink everything but the kitchen sink. Now, if you've never heard this idiom before, I would love to know what you think it might mean in the comment section, and then let's see if you're right. So pause now and write that. <laughs> okay, I'm starting. It means everything imaginable. This phrase became popular in World War II when newspapers would report that everything but the kitchen sink was thrown at the enemy. Everything imaginable. An example, Will packs lightly for travel, but I throw everything but the kitchen sink into my suitcases. Plural. <laughs> I'm one of those. Number six. Oh, I love this one. It's so expressive. It's hilarious. It is the lights are on, but no one's home. I think I mentioned this one in my seven polite ways to call someone stupid video where I went through the seven ways in which I had been an idiot throughout my life. If you would like to see some serious, serious self-deprecation, then do watch that video. This is used to say that somebody is stupid, even though they may appear normal. 
What a lovely phrase. An example. Jennifer has a degree in interior design, but the lights are on and no one's home. Number seven is donkey's years. Donkey's years. This is used to describe an action that has continued on for a very long time. And supposedly, this originates from rhyming slang. Donkey's ears used to mean years, but now they've just joined together to become donkey's years. An example, Will has lived in the countryside for donkey's years. He just wouldn't survive in the city. He's lived in the countryside for years. Number eight is to do a runner. To do a runner. And this means to leave a place hastily, quickly, in order to avoid an unpleasant situation or to avoid paying. An example, they ordered the caviar and the lobster, but when the bill arrived, they did a runner. They left hastily to avoid paying. Number nine, nothing to write home about. Nothing to write home about. If something or someone is nothing to write home about, it means they are not very exciting or not very special. An example, I met a boy at the ice rink, but he's nothing to write home about. He's not that special. I'm not that excited about him. Or the meal was nice, but it was nothing to write home about. It was nothing extraordinary. Number 10. This is one of my mother's favourite phrases. She has a lot. It is keep your eyes peeled, keep your eyes peeled. And this means keep your eyes open or be vigilant, keep on the watch. And it's not because she's worried about my security. She actually uses this phrase if she's looking to buy something and we're in a shop, she says, keep your eyes peeled for green scarves or keep your eyes peeled for any calendars with chickens on them. It's a very good phrase, I, I recommend you use it. Number 11 is to pick someone's brain, to pick someone's brain. And this is very weird sounding, isn't it? To pick at somebody's brain, to look for information. But that basically is what it means in a way. It means to obtain information by questioning somebody who is well informed on a subject. So it's something you hear in business a lot. And it's a really annoying question. Can I pick your brain for a minute? It basically means can I ask you loads and loads of questions about something that you know lots about and offer you nothing in return? An example, Colin, can I pick your brain about that new project? And undoubtedly, Colin would be rolling his eyes inside. <sighs> yes, you can pick my brain. Number 12 is to put feelers out, or sometimes we say put the feelers out. And this means to make informal suggestions so as to test a concept before any final decisions are made. So it's basically to test an idea by asking people's opinions before they commit to something. An example, can I suggest that we put the feelers out to see if the employees actually want a Zoom Christmas party this year? I honestly cannot imagine anything worse than a Christmas party on Zoom. I'm sorry if you've just organised one, but that sounds like hell. Or number 13, this is a great one, but they're all great because I chose them. It is the best thing since sliced bread. This means that something is the best and most useful innovation or invention of recent times. It means that something is a good invention. Now, you might be asking why sliced bread? Well, I asked myself that question and I did the research. When sliced bread was first brought to market, in 1928, it was a massive deal. There were huge marketing campaigns about sliced bread. It was marketed as the greatest step forward in baking innovation since bread was wrapped. An example, when flip phones came out, I thought that they were the best thing since sliced bread. I miss hanging up so sassily. Number 14 is take a chill pill take a chill pill. And this is a slightly patronising way to tell somebody to calm down or to relax. It never fails to enrage me when someone tells me to take a chill pill. To be honest, it enrages me when someone tells me to calm down. If someone is angry, telling them to calm down often makes it worse. An example, at the picnic, 
I told Mary to take a chill pill because she was freaking out about a wasp. And number 15 is I'll show myself out. I'll show myself out. And this is used when you have disgraced yourself. It means I'll leave. You don't have to show me the door. I will leave by choice. Nowadays, it is almost always used after telling a bad joke. You tell the joke, the reaction is awful, and you just say, I'll show myself out. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. I've got a joke. Let's try it. What's the difference between snowmen and snow women? Snowballs! Snowballs! <laughs> I'll show myself out. Right, that is it for today's lesson. Those were our 15 funny idioms. Okay, what did you get from this video? Any comments? Yeah, first, uh, her pronunciation was uh, kind of different. And I take some notes. Uh, for example, a storm in a teacup. Que esa sí es, eh, es bastante común. Yeah. Que nosotros decimos como que nos ahogamos en un vaso de agua, algo así. Exactly, that one. Very good. Y otro que me pareció gracioso fue to, to kick the bucket. Ah, okay. Como que se murió. <laughs> yeah. Amablemente dicen pass out, ¿verdad? Yeah, pass out. Y creo que es por mí. Ah, y donkey years. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, very good. There were many good idioms in this one, I guess. So nice. Uh, anybody has a different comment? No other comment. Uh, sí, la verdad es que usamos siempre idioms. La verdad es que a veces no, no sabemos que los usamos. Quizás el más común, el más fácil es OK. Alguien sabe de dónde viene esa palabra, esa expresión. Ok, todos decimos ok, aunque no hablemos inglés, ¿verdad? Pero ¿de dónde viene ok? ¿Alguien sabe, no? No, I don't know. Ah, ok, es una interesante historia. Uh, en la guerra, creo que fue la primera, había mucho, uh, bueno, estaban, ah, no, en la guerra civil de Estados Unidos fue, eh, estaban los del sur y los del norte peleando. Y los del sur eh, tenían en una pizarra anotado cuántos muertos había cada día. 18 muertos, que sería 18 killed, o 9 kills, 9 muertos. Eh, y luego solo ponían la K, eh, 18K, 18 muertos. Y eh, cuando no había habido muertos, ponían el 0 y la K, que era 0 eh, muertos. Y decían que ese día había sido un buen día porque no había habido muertos. Entonces era un día ok. De ahí viene la expresión OK. Entonces, ese es un idioma porque viene de algo que nada que ver, ¿verdad? Pero OK ahora significa bien, que está todo bien. Eh, y viene de eso, ¿verdad? de lo que hacían en la guerra civil de Estados Unidos. So, OK. Interesting. History sometimes is uh, very interesting. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting how uh, that comes to life. Words and phrases come to life. So uh, today we're going to check how to use if and when to join clauses. Primer pregunta, ¿qué es una clause? Do you remember? No un Santa Claus, but... Como un enunciado. Un enunciado o sea, es como cuando tenemos dos ideas, dos oraciones y las ponemos juntas, ¿verdad? Las unimos de una u otra manera. Ok, vamos a leer el primero. Vamos a ir viendo siempre pronunciation. Uh, everybody, please check into that one. We use if to introduce a possible or unreal situation or condition. We use when to refer to the time of a future situation or condition that we are certain of. We can only go in if you got your ticket. When I'm older, I love to be a dancer. Okay? Esa es como la parte básica. Do you have any pronunciation questions unreal teacher unreal 
Unreal. Unreal, yeah. Okay. Any other question? Pronunciation? Okay, leamos entonces. Let's see how it goes. Carla Daniela, you're the first one. Okay. We use it to introduce a possible or unreal situation or condition. We use when to refer to the time of a future situation or condition that we are certain of. You can only go in if you've got your ticket. When I'm older, I'd love to be a dancer. Very good, thank you. Christina, you are the next one. Hello, teacher. Hello. We just need to introduce a possible, a possible or real, unreal, yeah, unreal. Real situation or condition we use when, when to refer to the time of a future situation or condition that we are certain of. You can only go in if you be, you be got your ticket. You've got a ticket, you've. You ticket, your ticket. When I am older, I love to be a dancer. Very good, perfect. Saul Alberto, you are the next one. Okay, we use if to introduce a possible of unreal, unreal situation or condition. We use when to refer to the time of a future situation or condition that we are certain of. You can only go in if you you go go to your ticket. When I am older, I love to be a dancer. Very good, perfect, thank you. Now, Jeanette. We use if to introduce a possible and unreal situation or condition, condition, conditional. We condition. use. We use when to refer uh, to the time of the future situation or condi conditions. How do you say it, teacher? Condition. Condition that we are certain of. You can only go in if you 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 got your ticket. When I'm on older, it love to be a dancer. I I love to be a dancer. Right. Very good, Pearl. Thank you. Laura Fuentes. We use if to intrude, introduce a possible or unreal situation or condition. We use when to refer to the to the time of the of a future situation or condition that we are certain of. You can only go in if you got your ticket. When I older, I'd love to be a dancer. Perfect, thank you. Carla Ivania. Perdón, teacher, eh, ¿cuál línea era? Sería el párrafo, todo el párrafo. Ok. We use if to introduce a possible or unreal situation or condition. We use when to refer to their time of a future situation or condition that we aren't certain. Certain of you can only go in if you, you go your ticket. When I order, I love to be a dancer. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Marilyn. 
Okay. We use if to introduce a possible or a real situation or condition. We use when to refer to the time of a future situation or condition that we are certain of. You can only go in if you've got your ticket. When I'm older, I'd love to be a dancer. Perfect, thank you. Elizabeth Hernandez. Okay, teacher. We use if to introduce a possible or in real situation or condition. We use when to refer to the time of a future situation or condition that we are certain of. You can only go in if you go to ticket. When I'm older, I'd love to be a dancer. Very good, perfect. Now, Abel, Eden, listen. Not possible. Let's see then. So we gotta do it. Kevin Ramiro, is it possible for you? Not possible. Francisco Acuña. Okay, teacher. Okay. We use it to introduce a possible on or unreal situation. Or condition no condition we use use when to refer to the time of a future situation or condition that we are certain of you can only go go in if you you be got your ticket. When I older, I love to be a dancer. Very good, perfect, thank you. Nice, so now we're gonna check about um, some vocabulary here. Uh, unreal, what is unreal? Anybody knows what is unreal? Que no es real. Que no es real. Very good. And the other one is, um, let's see. Okay, you've, esa es la contracción de you have. Okay. Y I'd is la contracción de I would. Okay. Y entonces, ¿qué es lo que dice? Uh, usamos if, o sea que es sí, ¿verdad? Un condicional. Usamos if para introducir una situación posible o que no es real. O una condición. Si se hace esto, pasa esto otro. Y usamos when, que es cuando, para referirnos al tiempo de una situación futura o una condición también de la que estamos certeros de que va a suceder. O sea, es una condición y sabemos de que eso va a suceder. Entonces, por ejemplo, dice you can only go in if you got your ticket. Solo puedes entrar si tienes tu ticket. Si no tienes el ticket, no puedes. Ahí es un condicional. El otro dice, when I'm older, I love to be a dancer. Cuando sea mayor, yo amaré o amaría ser un bailarín. Entonces, cuando, ¿verdad? O sea, ese es el condicional aquí. Entonces, los dos son condicionales. That will be the first part. Do you have any question? Here. Okay, no questions. That's good. Let's move on with some comparisons. Okay. Uh, let's see the pronunciation. If Giles come back to the office, can you tell him I've gone home? The speaker does not know whether Giles is coming back to the office. It is possible, but not definite. Ese es el primero. Veamos el primero. Uh, come back. ¿Qué era come back? Do you remember? Eso lo vimos en el phrasal verbs. 
papá. Regresar. Regresar. Very good. Entonces, sí, guys, regresa a la oficina. ¿Le puedes decir que me fui a casa? Entonces, el condicional es ese, ¿verdad? Sí, regresa. No sabemos, regresa. De hecho, eso dice a la par. The speaker does not know whether guys is coming back to the office. It is possible, but it's not definite. O sea, quien habla no sabe si guys va a regresar a la oficina. Es posible, pero no, no es seguro. Y the other one says, when guys come back to the office, can you tell him I've gone home? Ah, este es diferente. Cuando guys regrese a la oficina, puede decirle que me fui. Aquí sí hay una certeza de que va, Giles va a regresar. Pues aquí se puede ver bien la diferencia. ¿verdad? Vean que la, la oración es exactamente la misma. Lo único que cambia es cuál condicional yo estoy usando. Con if puede que regrese y puede que no. ¿verdad? Hay una posibilidad. Con when va a regresar. ¿verdad? O sea, cuando pase esto, entonces, y ahí el complemento. ¿verdad? Ahí se puede ver exactamente el, el difference between one and the other. Uh, do you have any question here? Yes, teacher, yo tengo una. ¿Es necesario que if siempre vaya al inicio o puede ir eh, en medio, digamos? Puede ir en medio, no habría problema. O sea, puede ir eh, después. O sea, como son dos oraciones unidas, ¿verdad? Podemos decir... Uh -huh. Por ejemplo, can... darle vuelta, ¿verdad? Exacto. Can you tell him, uh -huh, if Giles comes back to uh -huh. the office? Exacto. O sea, lo único que cambiaríamos en ese ejemplo sería que en la primera parte, o sea, que es la segunda aquí que vemos, diría el nombre. Por ejemplo, can you tell Giles I gone home if he comes back to the office? Esa sería la única diferencia, pero ya sabemos a quién nos referimos porque al principio lo mencionamos. Igual en la segunda. Podemos decir, can you tell guys I've gone home when he comes back to the office? Esa sería la única diferencia y ambas se le puede dar vuelta. No a problem. Any other question? Good. So, I'm going to read about this one and then you are going to, esto sí lo vamos a leer. To talk about situations and conditions that are repeated or predictable, we can use either if or when plus present verb form. You can drive if you're 17. If you don't add enough wood, the fire goes out. When we go camping, we usually take two tents. She gets out of breath easily when she's jogging. Typical error. We don't use when to introduce possible or unreal situation. Unfortunately, if you arrive too late, you are not allowed to take the exam because they don't accept late enrollment. Not when you arrive too late. Pronunciation questions here. Teacher, predic predictable, no, no me fije como la, como la dijo usted. Predict okay. Predictable. Predictable. Okay. Predictable. Okay. Good. Any other pronunciation question? Okay. Okay, we are going to. <laughs> Not a problem. Sorry, sorry, teacher. Not a problem. Don't worry. Okay, so we are going to read them. Carla Daniela is the first one. Okay. To talk about situations and conditions that are repeated or predictable. We can use either if or when. Last present verb form. You can drive if you're 17. If you don't add enough wood, the fire goes out. When we go camping, we usually take two tents. 
She gets out of breath easily when she's young. Typical ever. We don't use when to introduce possible or unreal situations. Unfortunately, if you arrive too late, you're not allowed to take the exam because they don't accept late enrollment. Not when you arrive too late. Very good, perfect. Now, Cristina. Okay, teacher. Total about situations, situations and conditions that are repeat or predictable, predictable, we can use either 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 is or when uh, see, no more teacher plus 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 present bear for you can dry is to 70 <clears throat> you can dry is just your 70 if you don't add enough what the fire the fire the fire the fire the fire goes off when we go camping. We usually 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 stay to tents. Okay, very good. Now we're she gonna. Get, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, of breath, AI silly. Jogging. Jogging. Hola. Ya, yeah. yeah, sí, me escucha. Jogging. Yeah. Typical. Sí, sí, yes. A typical error we don't use when to introduce possible, possible or unreal situations. Unfortunately, if you arrive too late, you are not allowed to take the exam because they don't accept lay enrollment. Enrollment. No, Enrollment. when you are too late. Very good, perfect, thank you. Uh, let's listen now to Francisco Acuña. Okay, teacher, I do know. <laughs> <clears throat> To talk about situation and condition that, that are repaired or predictable, we can use a, either if you went plus present verb form. You can write if you are 70. If you don't, doesn't add a, in you go. Enough. The fire gas up. Sorry? Enough wood. Enough wood. <clears throat> when, when the world camping, we usually take two things. She gets out of bed easily when she jogging. Typical error. When doesn't you when to introduce possible or unreal situation? Unfortunately, if Unfortunately. you are right to lane, you are not allowed to take the exam because they doesn't as a play and run. Not when you arrive too late. Perfect, thank you. Now let's listen to Janeth. Not, uh, not possible for Janeth. Okay, uh, Laura Fuentes then. To talk about situation and conditions that are rep 
repeat it. Repeat it. Or repeat it. Or predictable. We can use either or either if or when plus present verb form. You can dry if you're 17. If you don't add in no good, the fear goes out. The fire. The fire goes out. When we go camping, we usually take two tents. She gets out of brain easily when she's joined. Jogging. Jogging. Typical er jogging. Typical error we don't use when to introduce possible or unreal situation. Uniformly. Unfortunately. If uh, unfortunately, if you arrive too late, you are not allowed to take the exam because you don't accept late in enrollment. Not when you arrive too late. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, Carla Ivania. Not possible. Let's see who else is missing. Carla Mendoza. Okay, to talk about situation and condition that are repeated or predictable, we can use either is or when plus present verb form. You can drive is your 70. If you don't add enough, good, the fire goes out. When we go camping, we usually take two tents. She get us get out of bread easily when she's joined. Typical error. We don't use when to introduce possible or unreal citation. Unfortunately, is you are right to read. You are not allowed to take the example because they don't accept late enrollment. Not when you are right to late. Perfect. Thank you very much. Marilyn. Okay. To talk about situation and conditions that are repeated object or predictable, we can use either if or when plus present verb form. You can drive if you're 70. If you don't add now, wood, the fire goes, goes out. When we go camping, we usually take the tent. She gets, she gets out of breath easily when she's going jogging. Typical error. We can use when to introduce possible or unreal situation. For, ¿Cómo se pronuncia ese? Unfortunately. Unfortunately, if you do a right to like, you're, you're not allowed to take the exam because they don't accept late enrollment. Not when you are right to late. Perfect. Thank you. Now, Elizabeth Hernandez. Okay, teacher, talk about situation and condition that are required or predictable. We can use either or if or when. Um, uh, plus. <laughs> plus, 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 in verb form. You can write if you're 17. If you don't and know who 
the the fire goes out. When we go camping, we usually take two tents. She gets out of what easily when she's go going. Typical error. We don't use when to introduce possible or real situation. Unfortunately, if you are right to light, you are not uh, allowed to take the exam because they not accept late enrollment, not when you are right to late. Perfect, thank you. Now, Abel Edenilson. Not possible. Okay, let's see. Saúl Adalberto. Okay, I'm here. Um, we talk about situation and conditions that are repeated, repeated or predictable. predictable. We can use either if or either. when plus either. Either if or when plus present verb form. You can drive if you're seven. If you don't add an output, the fire goes out. When we camping, we usually take two tents. She gets out of breath easily. Easily. When she easily when she's going. Jogging. 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 Typical error. We don't use when to introduce possible or unreal situation. Unfortunately, if you arrive too late, you are not allowed to take the exam because they no they don't accept late enrollment. Not when you arrive too late. Okay, very good, perfect. So uh, let's check some vocabulary and then we're gonna check what it says in grammar. Uh, let's see, predictable. What is predictable? Predictable. Know? Predictable, very good. And what is either? Se me olvida. <laughs> okay. Either tiene muchos usos. So, depends on many things, right? En este caso viene siendo algo así como, uh, como, uh, we can use either, podemos usar ya sea, if or when. Entonces, el uso más o menos así, en este, como para decir dos, dos opciones. Pero lo más común es cuando decimos me either, ¿verdad? Y idea sería como yo también. So, Ajá, que como tampoco lo oía yo, pero ahí no, no era tampoco. <laughs> sí, entonces se puede usar de varias maneras esta palabra. So, in this situation is something like uh, either this or this other. When you have two options and you, have, you can use both of the options. Okay, let's see. Wood, what is wood? Madera. Very good. Uh, tents. Do you know what is tent? Eso quería preguntarle, teacher. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, tents son como tiendas, tiendas de campaña. Tents. Ah. Okay. Y, y jogging. Ah, very good question. ¿Alguien sabe qué es jogging? Okay. Jogging es como salir a trotar. It's like an exercise. Okay. And what is breath? Do you remember that? Respirar. Very good. And let's see what else. Enrollment. What is enrollment? Okay. Enrollment es algo así como inscripción. Entonces, este que habla de no se aceptan 
inscripciones tardías, something like that. Okay, so now we're going to check about the grammar. So, to talk about situations and conditions that are repeated or predictable. Entonces, en situaciones o condiciones que se repiten o que son predecibles, podemos usar either, ¿verdad? O sea, ya sea if or when, cualquiera de las dos, más un verbo en presente. So, y tenemos algunos ejemplos. You can drive if you're 17. Esa creo que se entiende, ¿verdad? Eh, puedes manejar, puedes conducir si tienes 17. If you don't add enough wood, the fire goes out. En este caso usamos if, que es como una condición que es predecible. ¿verdad? Si no se ocupa suficiente madera, el fuego se apaga. Ese goes out, recordemos que es un phrasal verb de los que ya vimos. Go, go out. In this case, goes out porque es tercera persona. When we go camping, we usually take two tents. Eso es como repeated, una eh, acción que se está repitiendo. Cuando vamos a acampar, usualmente llevamos dos tiendas. She gets out of breath easily when she's jogging. En este caso, get out, como está hablando directamente de breath, es como que se queda sin aliento. Fácilmente. Easily, recordemos que la mayoría, no todas las palabras, pero la mayoría que tienen el why, esas son adverbs, ¿verdad? En, están reforzando en este caso un verbo. When she's jogging. Ok, ¿alguna pregunta hasta aquí? No, teacher, thank you. Ok. So we have typical errors we don't use when to introduce possible or unreal situations. O sea, para repeated y predictable podemos usar either if or when. Pero cuando hablamos de possible or unreal situations, no utilizamos when. Y hay un ejemplo ahí. Unfortunately, ¿qué era unfortunately? ¿Se acuerdan? Nobody knows. Desafortunado. Very good. Desafortunadamente. Si, sí, ahí está el if, ¿verdad? Si llegas tarde o muy tarde, no tienes permitido tomar el examen porque no se aceptan inscripciones tardías. En este caso, porque es una posibilidad, ¿verdad? O cuando es algo que no es real, vamos a usar siempre if. No vamos a usar when. Y es lo que dice abajo. No se ocupa... Cuando llegues muy tarde, porque eso es como que es, pensamos que sí va a pasar, ¿verdad? Entonces, eso solo es una posibilidad. Puede que sí llegas tarde, ¿verdad? So, it's a possibility. ¿Ok? In this kind of situations, we are going to use if, never, when. ¿Está clara esa parte? Sí, teacher. Very good. Hay que recordarlo cuando hablemos, ¿verdad? Ahí es donde a veces se nos olvida un par de cosas. But that is fine. Good, perfect. Now we're going to continue with the book. And it's here. So, we have a little reading so we can move on. It says, company procedures and policies. Read the procedure to request permission at the DAC company. Entonces, vamos a ver la pronunciación y luego vamos a leer. Está chiquito el reading ahora. One. Bueno, leamos desde el título. Procedure to request permission. One. First, print the request form that is available on the internet. Two. Fill out the form. Three. Write the reason for the permission. Four. Write the time and day you will be absent. Five, specify if it is due to medical or personal reasons. Six, ask for the department manager's signature. Seven, present the form at the human resources office. Eight, the human resources assistant will receive the form and sign it if it is accepted. Nine, 
if the human resources assistant does not accept the form, the permission is denied. Pronunciation questions. Do you have any pronunciation questions? Yes, teacher. The last word. Denied. Intranet. Uh, intranet. Esa es así más o menos como se escribe. Intranet. Intranet. Mm -hmm. internet. Mm -hmm. De hecho, no. Ya vamos a ver no. qué significa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other pronunciation question? Después de human. Uh, human, el número siete, ¿verdad? Human resources. Resources. Al cent, en el four, cuatro, en la cuatro. En el cuatro, as, absent. As, absent, okay. Absent, yeah. Any other pronunciation question? Signature, así como se escucha, signature. 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 Mm -hmm. No more questions. That is good. So, vamos a leer entonces. Janet ya me había pedido que sea la primera en esto. Hello, Janet. Ah, se le quedó frozen ahí. Bueno, la dejamos después. Eh, iniciamos entonces con Carla Daniela. Procedure to request permission. First, print the request form that is available on the internet. Fill out the form, write the reason for the permission, write the time and day you will be absent, specify if it's due to medical or personal reasons. Ask for the department manager's signature. Present the form at the human resources office. The human resources assistant will receive the form and sign it if it is accepted. If the human resources assistant does not accept the form, the permission is denied. Very good, perfect, thank you. Now, Cristina Cerritos. Hello, teacher, aquí estoy. Okay. okay. Procedure to request permission. Please bring the request for that is available, ay, esa palabrita, available. 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 Please bring the request for that is available of the internet to fill out the form. Three, write the reason for the permission. Four, write the time and day you will be asking. Five, specific. Specify. Is, specify. Specify. Is it is to, to medical or personal reason. Six, ask for the department manager's signature. Signature. Seven, present the four as the human resource office. Human, así sería, teacher. O, oh, sí, así se, se, sí. se pronuncia. Human, human okay. sí. Okay. Eight, the human resource, resource assistant will receive the four and six. Y, 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 sign it, sign, sign it. Sign it, sign it. Se unen las dos ahí. Sign, sign it. it. Uh -huh. Sign it is, is, it is accepted. Uh, night is the human resource assistant. Dos, assistant dos. No accept before the permission is denied. Denied. Denied, denied, okay. Very good, Hasta perfect. Now, Laura Fuentes.
Not possible for Laura. Let's see, Ivania. Not possible for Ivania. Jeanette. Produce, 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 Intranet. Intranet. Fill out the part. Write the reason for the permission. Write the time and day you will be absent. Absent. Specify. Specify if is it is due to medical or personal reasons. As for the ask. For the department manager's a signature, present the floor in the human research office. The human research assistant will receive the floor and sing it if, it if it is accepted. Signed. If the human research assistant does not accept the form, the permission is denied. Denied. Deny. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Ivania, is it possible for you? Yes, teacher. Okay. Uh, one. First, print the request for that is available on the internet. F fill out the form. Write a reason for the permission. Write a time and day you will be absent. A specific if specify. it is specified. Okay, thanks. A specify it if it is due to, to medical or personal reason. Ask for the department manager signature. Um, present the form and the human resource office. The human resource assistant will receive the form and sign it if it, if it is a set. If the human resource assistant does not accept the form, the permission is denied. Very good, perfect, thank you. Carla Mendoza. Okay. One, first, print the request form that is available on the internet. Two, fill out the form. Three, write the reason for the permission. Four, write the time and day you will be absent. Five, specify if it is the medical or personal reason. Six, ask for the department manager signature. Seven, Present the form at the human human resource office. Eight, the human resource assistant will receive the form and sign it, it is if it is accepted. Ninth, if the human resource assistant does not accept the form, the permission done. is denied. Is the night perfect? Thank you, uh, Marilyn. Okay, procedure to request permission. First, bring the request form that is available of the internet. Fill out the form, write the reason. For the permission, write the time and day you will be absent. Specify if it is due 
to medical or personal reasons. Ask for the department manager's signature. Present the form at the human resources office. The human resources assistant will receive the form and sign sign it if sign any it if it is accepted. If the human resources assistant doesn't does not accept the form, the permission is denied. 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 Perfect. Thank you, Bernie. Let's see Elizabeth. Elizabeth Hernandez, this is not possible for you. Not possible. Uh, Abel Edenilson, is it possible for you? Okay. Saúl Adalberto. Okay. Um, procedure, procedure to request permission. One. First, print the request form that is available 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 on the available on the intranet 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 two fill out the form three write the reason for the permission four write the time and day and day you will be absent five specify if it is due to medical or personal reason reasons six ask for the department manager's signature seven present the form at the human resource office eight the human resource assistant will receive the form and seeing it sign. If, sign it if it is accepted accepted nine if the human resource assistant does not accept the form the permission is denied perfect thank you very much and francisco is it possible for you okay not possible so let's check some words. Eh, chequeamos available. Que recordar la pronunciación aquí es available. Request. Intranet. Permission. Absent. Signature. Human. Human resources. Este es plural, entonces te dice resources. Stein. Stein. And denied. Ok. Ahora veamos algo de palabras. So, uh, what is available? Disponible. Disponible, very good. Available. Uh, fill out. What is fill out? Llenar. Llenar. Very good. Llenar la forma en este caso. Let's see. Signature. Firma. La firma. Very good. Uh, let's see. Sign. Sign it. Que sería sign it. Firmarla. Firmarla. Hacer la acción. ¿verdad? And denied. What is denied? Negada. Negada, ¿verdad? Denegada. Very good. Perfect. Okay. And uh, now it says we're going to make a list of situations in which you could request permission. De hecho, no vamos a hacer esto. Si no, lo que vamos a hacer es, ya vimos cómo es el procedimiento. ¿verdad? Así es un procedimiento. It's a first, do this. Second, do this. Third, do this. Y ahí va diciendo los pasos que tiene que seguir. Entonces, así es un procedimiento. 
lo que vamos a hacer ahora es pues crear un procedimiento así como está este de nice así lo vamos a ir haciendo entonces vamos a hacer grupos y luego eh, vamos a pensar un procedimiento el que ustedes quieran puede ser el procedimiento imaginémonos para ir al seguro un procedimiento para eh, comprar en línea en un almacén crear una cuenta de correo un procedimiento para hacer algo ok eso es lo que vamos a hacer en este momento. Les voy a hacer grupos para que lo podamos hacer. Eh, ¿Tienen preguntas o dudas en lo que vamos a hacer? Yo tengo una duda, teacher, y no ah. habíamos hecho eso antes. Me habíamos dicho algo parecido. En este caso vamos a hacer un procedimiento de una cosa X, ¿verdad? A ver. Ok, very good. Entonces, procedimientos de... Si son laborales es mejor porque si metemos cosas o palabras, ¿verdad?, que, que, que están relacionadas ya con lo que nosotros vamos viendo, porque ya más adelante ya son solo cosas de labor, ¿verdad?, so we need to do something like that. Ok. So we're going to check into that one. Les daré unos minutos para que puedan avanzar. Here we go. Hello, ¿cómo vamos? ¿Estamos ya trabajando en el procedimiento?
Hello, terminamos ya, podemos regresar ya. Eh, ya casi. Ok. No sé si usted puede ver los mensajes que ya tenemos en el chat. Eh, no, no. Ah, ¿Y si lo pongo ahora? Eh, tampoco, como eso está en un solo... Ah, bueno, vamos a ver, vamos a ver. Ahí sí, vamos pero... todavía. Todavía no, pero bueno, no lo puedo ver, pero no importa. Le voy a dar un par de minutos más. Ah, ok. Good Gracias. Good.
Ok, so we are going to check about the procedures. En el primero, en el primer grupo teníamos a Janet y Carla Daniela. A ver, les escuchamos. Okay. Vale. Eh, es, um, procesor de... Um, Si estás al seguro. Ah, uh, procedure. Procedure to visit days. Ok. Uh, number one, it consult a, a permits. Number two, ask for permission and explain the situation to your boss. Uh, number three, attend the, a great day in time. Number four, Give your documents to the person at the entrance to check if your is custom. Okay, then wait for them to locate you. After that, when it is your turn and they call you, enter the office. Then explain your symptoms to the doctor and allow yourself to be properly checked out. Way to be called to receive medication or test, and that's all. Okay, very good, very nice. It was very complete. Perfect, thank you. En el número dos teníamos a Gisela, Abel, Ellison y Kevin Ramiro. ¿Pudieron hacer algo? Yeah, I guess this one not possible. Tampoco creo que el tres es donde estaba Carla en Laura. Pero en el cuatro creo que sí. Elizabeth, uh, Gabriel y Roberto Cruz. Did you do something there? Mm, no pasó. Ok, el siguiente era Cristina, Carla Mendoza y Saúl Adalberto. Este, ah, yo pensé que solo me había tocado con don Saúl. Lo que pasa es que a no, veces... Por, creo... Ah, Ajá. que quizás ella está de oyente ahorita. Ajá, Va, sí. Bueno, no hay problema. Eh, hicimos un solo proceso y fuimos un poquito breve. Sí. Ok. Este, eh, fill out the permit application form. Um, it is under overdose de inmediate. Was for signature. Visit the East Clinic. Pick up the medicine and report to the office. Okay, and that's it. Everything is there. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Very good. Creería que no falta nadie. El demás creo que estaban de oyentes. Eh, sí, no, don Saúl sí, sí participó. Él sí. Ah, sí, pero él, ya usted dijo todo lo del grupo, sí, ¿verdad? Yes. Ah, okay. yes. Yes, yes. Very good. Perfect. Okay, very good. So we are going to continue with the class then. So let's continue with the book. Casi terminamos la unidad cuatro. So it says company procedures and policies. Uh, write a paragraph about policies and procedures. Joining clauses with when and if. Number one says, what happens if an employee in your company shows up late? Aha, people, what happens if an employee in your company shows up late? What happens? At my work, you have to report to your boss, and then uh, she decides if you. ¿Cómo se dice reponer? A recover. Uh huh. If you recover the time at lunch time, or at the. Okay. A la salida. At the end of the day. Yeah, at the end. Okay. Yeah, that seems kind of good. I mean, because you receive all your payments. So that's good. Yeah, it's, it's a way bit, but if you don't uh, go all the day, you have to discount. Yeah, of course. That is like the regular thing, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, that's good. Any other comment? What happens if an employee in your company shows up late?
Ok, no problem. Let's go to the conversation. La digo y ustedes se quedan ahí la pronunciation. It says, hi, Annie. How is it going? Hello, Brad. I am fine. And you? I am okay, thanks. Look, I want to ask you, what does your boss do when a worker doesn't come to work? Well, if someone doesn't come, my boss call him or her. And when the person returns, he or she receives a notification or warning. Why, Brad? Well, because I didn't show up to work today. I understand. If you see your boss tomorrow, explain him the situation. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. I think I will do that. Thanks, Annie. Pronunciation questions here? Understand, teacher. I see a pronounce. Understand. Understand, yeah. Don't understand. Okay. Any other pronunciation question? No other. Okay, this is kind of basic, so it's no big deal. Iniciamos entonces con Janet y Cristina. Okay, teacher. Si gusta empieza este Yani. Hi, Annie. How is it going? Hello, Brad. I am fine, and you? I am okay, thanks, Look, I want to ask you what does your boss do when a worker doesn't going to work? Well, is some, some one, I said someone. someone, okay. Well, it's well, well, is someone uh, does doesn't. not doesn't doesn't teacher doesn't 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 from my boss call in on or air hair uh, hair or hair and when the person returns he or she receives 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 he or she receives. Uh, a notification, a notification or warning why, Brad? Well, because I didn't how showed the work today. Hi, understand. I do see your boss more play in the situation. Yeah, I think I will do that. Thanks, Annie. Thank you very well. Thank so, you. nice. Carla, Daniela, and Elizabeth, is possible for you? Yeah, for me, yes. Okay, okay. so uh, Carla, Daniela, and Elizabeth. Okay, hi, Annie, how is it going? Hello, Brad, I am fine, you? I'm okay, thanks. Look, I want to ask you, what does your boss do when a worker doesn't come to work? Why is someone doesn't call my boss call him or her? And when the person who calls, she or she decides a notification or warning why what? Well, because I didn't show up to work today. I understand. If you see your boss tomorrow, explain to him the situation. Yeah, I think I will do that. Thanks, Annie. Perfect, thank you. Uh, Laura, is it possible for you? Not possible. Let's see yes, then. Yes, teacher. Okay. And Ivania, is it possible for you? Yes, teacher. Okay, Carl. Uh, okay. So it's going to be for you and Ivania. Laura Ivan. Okay. Hi, Annie. How is it going? Hello, Brad. I am fine. And you? I am okay. Thank you. Look, I want to ask you what does your boss do when a worker doesn't come to work? Where is someone doesn't? 
doesn't come on, my boss called him or her. And when the person returns, he or she receives a notification or warning. Why, Brad? Well, because I didn't show up to work today. I understand. If you see you boss tomorrow, explain to him the situation. Yeah, I think I will do that. Thanks, Annie. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Who's missing? Almost everybody is in. Uh, Listen, uh, Carla Mendoza, is it possible for you? Yes. Okay, con Saúl Alberto le toca. Okay. Uh, hi, Ali. Okay, comienzo yo, comienzo usted, Saúl. Okay, ¿cómo se? No escucho bien. Okay. Okay. Hi, Annie. How is it going? Hello, Brad. I am fine. And you? I am okay. Thanks. Look at look. I want to ask you, what you what what does your boss do when a worker doesn't come to work? Well, if someone 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 doesn't, someone, someone doesn't come my boss, call him or her. And when the person returns, he or she receive a notification or, war or warning. Will Brad? Why Brad? Why Brad? Well, because, because I did show, show up to work today. I understand. If you see your boss tomorrow, explain him the situation. Yeah, I think I will do that. Thanks, honey. Perfect, thank you. Abel Edison, is it possible for you? Yes, teacher. Okay, le va a ayudar. Vamos a ver. Creo que vamos a tener que repetir. A ver, le va a ayudar Janet. Okay. Hey, Annie. How is it going? Hello, Brad. I am fine. And you? I am out. Thanks. Look, I want to ask you, what does your boss do when I work? It does in come to work. Come to work. Yeah. Come to work. Well, well, if someone doesn't go to work, my boss called him. I had I went to the person for tours. He or she received a notification or warning. Why, Brad? Well, because I didn't show up to work today. I understand. If you see your boss tomorrow, explain him the situation. Yeah, I think I will do that. Thanks. And Perfect, very good, thank you. So, uh, regarding pronunciation, I don't see much problem. Let's see, receives, okay, notification. Um, that will be it. Okay, so now, uh, let's check some words. How's it going? Recordemos que esta es una forma de saludo. There is no other, I guess. No, no other. Okay, let's do the exercise. Unscramble the statements below. Vamos a organizar, a poner en orden esas oraciones de acuerdo a la, a la conversación. So, le voy a dar un par de minutitos nada más solo para que vean cómo va, pero creo yo que está bastante fácil. So, let's check it out.
Okay. So number one, how is it going to be? Mm, she receives a notification when... Oh, no, sería. The employee receives a notification when she arrives. Esa era la única duda que tenía. ¿Dónde ponía she? ¿Y dónde ponía el employee? Uh, sería, pensaría que es mejor she. She receives. She receives uh -huh. a notification when the employees arrives. Arrives. When the employee arrives. Yeah. Eh, solo que sería arrive. Eh, bueno, el employee, si es tercera persona. That would be good. But that would be it. Okay, number two. Who's going to be number two? Anybody? Están tomando valor, teacher. <laughs> yeah, I know. Nuestro cerebro está formando. Porque... <laughs> sí, sí, la neurona está trabajando duro. Con todo, más que hasta ahora de la noche es complicado, I understand. 50, 50, 50, 50. Bueno, yeah. <laughs> hoy no estoy dormida. Yo creo que sería, what does your boss do? What does... Le falta algo. Le falta, sí. ¿Va que Sí, what does your boss do? Y ahí tendríamos que poner if or when, ¿verdad? Yo diría when. Uh -huh. When a worker doesn't go. 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 Yeah. Así quedaría. Está un poco raro, pero anyways. Number three. My boss calls if. Creo que sería, I call. I call. Ah, I call. My boss. Mm -hmm. I call my boss. I don't if show I up. I don't yet. show up. Uh -huh. Okay, very good. If I don't show up. Very good, perfect, very nice. Hey, uh, do you have any question? Okay. So, we're going to check the grammar. Esto está fácil porque hay algunas cosas que ya vimos ahí arriba. A ver, va a leer el cuadrito. Ajá. Let's see. Saúl Adalberto. Ok. How to use if and when to join clause. When and if have similar meaning. We use when for usual situation and if for unusual situation. Good clauses, good clauses have to be in simple present. Use a comma when if or when come at the beginning. 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 What do you what do you do when you forget your tools for work? What do you do if you miss the company transportation? I ask for a backup set when I forget my tools. Forget. I forget my tools. And I call a taxi if I miss the company transportation. When I forget my tools, I ask for a backup set. If miss the company transportation, I call a taxi. Okay, very good, perfect. So, okay. uh, when and if have similar meaning. Se parecen los significados, ¿verdad? Okay, vimos. We use when for usual situation. Entonces, when es cuando es usual, cuando es algo que va a suceder, sabemos de qué va a suceder. And is for unusual situations, cosas que puede que sí, puede que no. Both clauses have to be in simple present. Entonces, eso es parte de la gramática. Hay que usarla con presente simple. Los verbos tienen que ir en presente simple. Y esta parte es importante. Use a comma when if or when come at the beginning. Si la cláusula va al principio, le ponemos 
una coma para separar las dos oraciones. Entonces, veamos las, los ejemplos. What do you do when you forget your tools for work? What do you do if you miss the company transportation? Esa es en parte de las preguntas. Eh, la siguiente está interesante porque está el mismo ejemplo de dos maneras. I ask for a backup set when I forget my tools. O when I forget my tools, coma, ahí lleva la coma, ¿verdad? I ask for a backup set. Del otro lado tenemos el if. I call a taxi if I miss the company transportation. O si pongo if al principio. If I miss the company transportation, coma, I call a taxi. Entonces, lo más importante quizás de este cuadro es eso. Que si ponemos when o if al principio, la cláusula tiene que ir separada por una coma. Las dos ideas, las dos oraciones, tienen que ir separadas por una coma. Do you have any questions here? No, teacher, thank you. Está fácil, ¿verdad? Bueno, vamos a escribir, a ver, cuatro oraciones. Dos con when y dos con if. Les doy unos minutos para que le escribamos y luego compartimos con los compañeros. Let's see how it goes. Ok, vamos a continuar entonces. A ver, Saúl Adalberto. I don't. Ninguna. No. Pero sí entendió la gramática. Sí, eh, bueno, pues si quiere, permíteme, hago una. Y... Ah, ok, Otro. good, good. Ah, perfecto. Vamos entonces con Carla Daniela. I'm writing it. Ah, ok, no yet. Yeah. Eh, solo tengo una pregunta. Uh -huh. Si yo digo que me voy en bus, sería I take o I'm. ¿Cómo sería? El verbo. Sí. Puede ser take, when I take the bus, cuando yo tomo el bus. Ah, bye. 
por ejemplo, yo estaba escribiendo when my boyfriend doesn't pick me up, me voy en bus. Sí, I take a bus. That would I be take it. the bus. Thank you. Good. ¿Alguien terminó ya? Ok, esperamos uno o dos minutitos más. Then let's see how it goes. Teacher, you said uh, two examples of if and two of when, yep. right? Yep. Okay. Ok, let's check. A ver, Carla Daniela ya terminó. Uh, tengo tres. Okay. ¿Te la digo? Yes, please. Ok, when my boyfriend doesn't pick me up, I take the bus. Ok. If rains today, I will sleep relaxing. Ok. And what do you do if you damage your cell phone? Ok, very good. That is very nice. And Abel and Nilsson. Not possible. Uh, Jeanette? No terminado. Ah, okay. Uh, uno tengo, teacher. Okay, veamos. Uh, when I forget my bash, I can't not get to work. Okay, very good. That is nice. Eh, Cristina. Work. Not possible. Uh, Elizabeth. Teacher, solo una tengo. Okay. What do you when you're late for work? What do you do when you're late for work? Okay, that's good, perfect, thank you. Eh, Carla Mendoza. Not possible. Um, Teacher, uh -huh. it's correct. When do you go to the gym? No sería when you go to the gym y ahí lo demás. When you? When you go to the gym. Uh -huh. Y el otro, when do they study? Or when go to... Eh, depende de qué quiere decir. When ¿Qué do they... quiere decir? Cuando estudian. Pero la otra parte, ¿cómo es toda la oración? When do they study? Pero, ¿cómo sería toda, in, toda la oración? En the weekend. Lo que pasa es que cuando es when, estamos usando dos situaciones que van unidas, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, when I study, when... I always eat a lot, por ejemplo. Entonces, una va unida con la otra. Entonces, quisiera saber cuál es toda la idea que usted quiere poner. ¿En qué tiempo de la semana estudio? ¿Cuándo qué? Cuando es eh, en específico un día que estoy. Ajá, yo entiendo lo que me no, dice ahorita, no, pero no cumple. O sea, es como que le diga yo, cuando yo como pizza, ah, pero me falta otra parte. ¿Qué es la otra parte? Esa es la, la idea. Ah. Entonces, cuando usamos when, siempre hacemos dos oraciones juntas. O sea, es como, por ejemplo, si yo digo, cuando estudio inglés, 
Entonces solo digo eso, no, no, no hace match con nada más. Entonces tenemos que decir, cuando yo estudio inglés, practico mucho en la computadora, por ejemplo. Entonces unimos dos ideas y el ah, web, ajá, el web nos, lo usamos para unir esas dos ideas, o el if, para como cuando decimos, si yo estudio inglés, el diccionario... Ah, por ejemplo, when do they study English, I learn more. Ok, solo que no lleva el do. Es lo único que no está bien ahí. De ahí todo lo demás está bien. Ok. Ok. Very good. Perfect. We are going to check the attendance then. Do you have any questions with the class of tonight? No, okay. teacher, I don't. Very good. So let's check. Abel Edenilson Salazar Melara. Present, teacher. Good. Abigail Elizabeth Flores Hernández. Present. Good. Carlos Humberto Estrada Escobar. Elia Yanira Canizale Blanco. Francisco Ernesto Acuña Rivera. Present teacher. Good. Gabriel Esaú Melara Rosales. Gisela Beatriz Hernández Morales. Joana Saraí Maldonado González. Carla Daniela Molina Cruz. Present. Good. Carla Ivania Anaya Ancheta. Carla Lorena Mendoza Guevara. Present. Good. Kevin Ramiro Vázquez Pineda. Laura Guadalupe Fuentes de Meléndez. Present. Good. Marilyn Alejandra Grande Pérez. Mario Ernesto López Ramírez. Mirna Janet Ángel de Castro. Present teacher. Good. Roberto Emilio González Cruz. Santos Cristina Cerrito de Ruiz. Present teacher. Good. Saula de Alberto Cornejo Valdés. Present. Good. Jocelyn Stephanie Roldán Castaneda. Ok, el 101 de ahora es para Cristina. Y see you tomorrow, my friends. Have a good night. And see you. Have a very good rest. Bye, teacher. Good night. Hello, Cristina. How are you? Teacher, me pasó un accidente, pero me levanté a cambiar. Ah, no tenga pena. Yo lo entiendo. Ay, que te estoy pasa? con la cuestión de la menopausia. Ay, mira, qué lío. Con eso. Ah, ok. I'm sorry to hear that one. Yeah, uy, más que dejé activada la cámara y me dije que estaba activa. <risa> ok, no pero, problem. Sí, no problem. sí, bueno, estos one on son siempre de todas las clases. Me imagino que tiene un poco de experiencia. Sí, sí. Entonces, Deja unos cinco minutitos ahí o no sé cuánto tiempo. Claro que sí. Ahora, sí. La primera pregunta es, ¿cómo siente usted que va? ¿Siente que va aprendiendo, que va avanzando, que va agarrando algo? Sí, sí, me cuesta, vea, como a muchos, vea, pero sí, yo siento que voy aprendiendo, sí. Very good. Más ah, sí, las... exageradamente, pero sí, sí voy aprendiendo. Ok, nice. Uh -huh. Sí. La siguiente pregunta que tengo para usted es, um, ¿tiene usted alguna pregunta en algún tema, alguna cosa que hayamos visto o que haya visto en el pasado? Um, Piense que a veces, a veces pienso yo de que quizás como no me aprendí yo el abecedario del todo eh, y pienso practicarlo porque quizás en eso están algunos fallos míos. Ok. No, no, no me aprendí bien el abecedario y creo que de ahí depende todo. O sea, en buena parte. Y la práctica también, ¿verdad? Que tengo que hacer, que tengo que escuchar más audios, tengo que, que es, es, escuchar más que todo, escuchar yo para ir aprendiendo. O sea, aparte de la clase, vea. Ok. Uh -huh. 
Ok, si sí, me parece un buen plan. Eh, eh, sí, el abecedario es importante y lo puede practicar de muchas maneras. Hay audios, hay ejercicios de letreo, cosas por el estilo. Eh, y sí, bueno, es importante que, que identifiquemos cómo aprendemos, ¿verdad? Sí. Todos aprendemos de manera diferente. La clase es como para mostrar gramática y practicar, ¿verdad? Preguntar y cosas por el estilo. Pero sí es muy importante ir practicando nosotros en nuestro tiempo libre. Sé que es difícil porque trabajamos y muchas cosas, sí, ¿verdad? Sí. Pero dentro de lo que cabe, si usted toma unos 15, 20 minutos diarios o cuando pueda ¿verdad? para practicar, sí, sí, sí. hacer ejercicios, eso es definitivamente la verdad. A mí Ahora, me encanta escuchar cómo lo hablan de fluido y todo eso, como que las canciones en inglés, o sea, quisiera entenderlas. Y... Entonces, este, pero sí, con la práctica. Perfecto. Ahora, fíjese que sí, la quiero felicitar porque al principio sentía que le costaba bastante, bastante. Sí. Pero ahora ya lee, ya habla un poco más fluido. Eso es muy bueno porque sí quiere decir que se le van quedando la pronunciación, sí. las palabras y ya conecta mejor todo. Y también sí, pero recuerdo... le digo a usted que mejor aunque me equivoque, me pregunte. Definitivamente. Ajá. Eso es excelente porque así practica, ¿verdad? Y vamos dejando atrás esos vacíos que tenemos. Sí, muchas gracias. Perfecto, pero sí, sí va avanzado. Yo sí he notado la diferencia, entonces. Sí, pero yo voy a seguir avanzando más. Sí, definitivamente, eso es lo siguiente, ¿verdad? Seguir sí. viendo de las clases, practicar, tratar de entender. Si hay preguntas, hacerlas, ¿verdad? No, no, no se queda con las dudas, siempre hay que hacerlas. Sí, ah, y pues igual si tiene preguntas y las quiere hacer en el chat, en el grupo o directamente, también estamos ahí para ayudar. Ok, dicho. ahí sale su número, ¿verdad? En el WhatsApp. Sí, ahí sale mi número. Ahí está bien. Perfecto. Eh, ¿Alguna otra cosa que pueda ayudarle? No, solamente muchas gracias, teacher. Perfecto. Un gusto entonces. See you tomorrow. Have a good night. Ok, teacher. Feliz noche. Good night. Hasta luego. Good night. Bye.